back on Steel and Vance. And Linda, you know what? Talking about climate, talking about wildfires, changed my plans for this long weekend because of wildfire sn- smoke coming from your home province of Alberta. This is some flashback to what we've dealt with in BC. There are tens of thousands of people in Alberta and BC that are on evacuation alert. This is kind of the new normal, isn't yeah, it? It's, it's like sadly. every summer we're seeing earlier fires, a lot of heat and smoke. I think Edmonton or Alberta had the worst uh, air, air quality. quality in the world. Yeah. So this is scary stuff. And, you know, depending on where you sit on this, it's kind of hard to say, gee, climate change isn't real when you see all these when, crazy events. And when you listen to scientists who have mm. been screaming from the rooftops uh, for years about climate change and the climate emergency we find ourselves in now, it's undeniable. We called it smogist for a while there. It's May and the amount of smoke that's even in Metro Vancouver right now. And as I said, Kamloops today, yesterday actually, as of Wednesday, was an 11 out of 11 on the air quality scale. And yet, we're starting to see headlines where we're talking about the climate danger and the crises around the world, and people are starting to attack the messenger, right? Uh, So here's an article from The Guardian, and we have the climate deniers. Vicious climate deniers. They're absolutely going after the scientists, they're going after scientific journalists, they're going after meteorologists. The weather people! You're coming at the meteorologists? Are you serious right Look at these tweets. Climate scientists uh, now facing targeted abuse in what appears to be coordinated efforts to make climate doubts and denial appear more prevalent than they actually are. Look at some of the things that people are saying. I just want to show you a couple of tweets. And there are thousands Thousands of these these. online. Oh, have these poor fragile victims lost their jobs and been blackballed for presenting a study that didn't align with their cash cow? Have they been maligned, slandered, and excommunicated from this obscenely powerful, wealthy, and lucrative climate catastrophe religion. And Jody, read this next one. This one is, if their ideas were correct and supported by the data, they wouldn't feel abused or attacked by me when I point out they are wrong. I don't feel attacked when someone disagrees with me. It's not about agreeing. It's about the science. Yeah. And that's, you said it off the top of the show, Linda, it's that the people who are screaming about COVID-19 and the anti-vax, anti-science community don't have that to yell about anymore. So now they're yelling at the scientists. They're and pivoting. It's so, really quite something. And sci- ours, scientists are saying, you know what, I'm out of yeah. social media. Well, and a friend of ours who's a meteorologist and uh, a big wig with Environment Canada, Claire Martin, she tweeted out this story the other day that is uh, people like herself yeah. and all around the world starting to get attacked in, by climate trolls. And then we decided we should connect with one of our friends who knows a little something yeah. about being on the hot seat when it comes to science, about climatologists, and as well as politics. Yeah. Uh, you're going to recognize our next guest, Professor Weaver. Uh, welcome to Steel and Fans. Hello, Andrew Weaver, uh, former leader of the BC Green Party, climate scientist. Uh, by the way, happy National Caesar Day. Do you have a... Uh, Oh, there look at you. Uh, I do. Tell us what is that? Cheers. I, I was, well, this is the uh, famous Surfrider Tropical IPA. Surfrider is a, a wonderful environmental group here on the uh, Victoria. It's part of Surfrider Canada. They do a lot of beach cleanups and they've worked with Vancouver Island Brewery for this fundraiser um, IPA that actually is exactly my favorite. That is, it's a Love citrusy. It kind of light IPA, highly recommended. With some And ethics. no, I'm not getting paid. To, <laughs> right, it's not, not drink- getting paid to say no. it. <laughs> no, this is not a sponsor. And I'm not segment. drinking it. No, because you're inside no. the ring road. We know the I, rules at UVic, right? These yeah. are the rules. Hey, Exactly, it, it can't crack this. As soon as I get outside the ring road, all good, but not yeah. inside the ring room. Okay. We tried to contact you. Thankfully, we had your phone number, but we tried to contact you initially on your Twitter, but you don't have it anymore. Why? Yeah, I got I, I got back on. It, I, I've been off it twice. It is so toxic now. Oh yeah. Um, particularly, well, there's a surprise. I mean, I've seen <laughs> some of your what you the abuse you've had to deal with, Jody. Mm-hmm. But it is so toxic now that you put out anything, and and you showed some of them. But it's it's like that pretty much everywhere. And many of these people are fake people. So right. I, I did delete my. I just got off it for a, a, a couple of weeks actually, and then I, I thought, okay. There is a platform to get like I'm trying to get information on Ukraine and I am Ukrainian, right? So I've got a lot and the most the best place to get it, it seems, is Twitter. Mm. And so I've got the account, but I'm just looking at uh, it for Ukrainian news. Um, but what's what's interesting with uh, climate science today as and, and you know, I we, we often think about politicians as being the ones who get a lot of abuse. 
Uh, I would tell anyone who would listen back in 2013, when I moved into the legislature from being a climate scientist at the University of Victoria, speaking quite publicly about um, the concerns about climate change, that the abuse that I receive, both on social media, more than through traditional newspapers, radio, et cetera, paled in comparison in the ledge compared to what I was as a climate scientist. It was almost wow. like a treat walking into the legislature. Going into you know, politics I mean, was harder than being the climate scientist. No, the other way around. The climate science, yeah. the abuse I got as a climate scientist was way worse. Uh, than right, the abuse so I even I got, got that for backwards. The first four years. It sounds so counterintuitive. My goodness. Let me ask you well, this, though. I can tell Andrew. you some examples if okay, you want. But yeah. yeah, sure. Okay, here's one. Um, what many people don't realize, and this is one of the problems that it takes to advance climate policy, is when you're advancing climate policy, you may think you have the right answer, and you may think what, you know what needs to be done, but you've got to bring people with you. Let me say, for example, that there's, look, I'm going to make a, a, a round number guess, something like 20% of people in the, in the U.S., for example, and, and certain parts of Alberta and, and in B.C. as well. Um, believe that, in fact, uh, climate change is God's will. It's part of the uh, preordained nature of taking the Earth through the transition to the second coming via Armageddon, and that climate scientists who speak out to raise concern about the need to reduce greenhouse gases are somehow interfering with God's will. Now, that may sound completely weird, but literally I could show you myriad emails, as I do in my science, my classes that I teach here, of people quoting scriptures at, at me, saying much along those lines. In fact, I had at the University of Victoria for several years, a guy who would stand out with a placard in front of the university's main entrance saying, Andrew Weaver's a practicing liar. And in specifically, <laughs> he was addressing that, I had him quoted on my, 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 my phone, I kept the recording of him telling me I'm going to hell because I'm interfering with God's will. And, and But it's not a one-off, it's quite, uh, out there, but we don't talk about this. You know, there are there are those who believe the world is six thousand and twenty six years old. Well, you if you believe that, and we talk about climate change and historical climates going back millions of years, you've lost that audience right away. So part of the problem here is that there's a lot of misunderstanding. There's a lot of uh, a fear out there, and then the people who use their approach to fear and attack the messenger rather than stand back and reflect upon what the message actually is. You know what? I interviewed the climate scientist Michael Mann from the hockey stick. Oh, that he's a good Mann. friend. Yeah, and he told yeah. me that there are studies that show a definite link between climate deniers and your political affiliation, that you tend to be more likely to be a climate denier if you lean right politically. Do you, do you believe that to be true? A hundred percent. But there, there's actually two sides to the coin. And, and I would have, have argued of late, it's actually each are, are becoming as difficult as the other. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, you have the far right, the kind of um, QAnon, the kind of freedom convoy, the anti vax co. On the other hand, you have the far left. They, they are actually as intolerant as the mm -hmm. far right mm -hmm. in that their views are that the world is going to end in 10 years. Therefore, we have to do everything now. And if you don't agree with me, you are also the devil reincarnated. So these extreme groups, what they actually end up doing is turning off the masses. And, and in fact, um, in particular, the, the kind of left group has to be very careful that through their messaging, that they don't drive the center, the average person, to become more on the right by, by kind of uh, moving into a level of despondency and denial because right. of a fear-based approach to action. So all the solutions are there. We just need to actually rationally discuss moving forward, bringing people with us, recognizing that dealing with climate change is actually the single biggest opportunity for prosperity innovation and creativity the world has ever seen. Yeah, got a rational. Way what a people thought. back to the middle. What a thought. Rational. Rational. Indeed. It's so good to see you. We're going to have to get you back on again because clearly there was not enough time to talk about this. Uh, but Andrew Weaver, uh, you look good and uh, enjoy that beer when I have a new knee. Crack I have a new knee. Do you, you have a new oh, knee? Yeah. And I'm not good. I'm very upset actually um, because the Edmonton Oilers irony lot not lost on me got eliminated and then <sighs> I sadly, was avoiding that the subject number two team, professor <laughs> the number two team Seattle Kraken got taken out right afterwards so who do you like, who we do you all root expected for now? The who do you root for now I don't like we all knew See, the Leafs are going to crash and burn this is 
57 years. Are you an Oilers fan too? Oh, God, oh. I'm a huge Oilers fan, and they are going to yes. get the cup next year. You heard it here. That's why I knew I liked you. Good for you, you Oilers yeah. fan. All right. She I'm gonna, delayed cheers I'm gonna, until I get us out of here. Road. Cheers. I lo I've, I've, I've lost the group. we got to go to break. What's coming up? Thank you, Professor. Thanks, Great to Andrew have you. Weaver. We have to have Andrew Weaver uh, back. Absolutely. Yeah. Coming up next on Seal and Vance, want your fur baby to be part of the festivities, mm -hmm. whether it's wedding or another special event. Mm -hmm. We have dogs. We have cats. And we have ideas in the studio next.